basement would often interrupt my gaming sessions, prompting me to glance towards the source of the noise. Creepy sounds emanated from the laundry room, becoming an unsettling yet familiar part of my routine. However, one evening, a different sound echoed from within the depths of the basement, causing me to hit pause on my game. It wasn't the usual hum of the laundry machine or the clatter of the boiler. It was the distinct noise of something hitting the floor and bouncing. Startled, I leaped off the couch and dashed upstairs to find my mom. Breathless, I blurted out, there's someone in the basement. My mom remained surprisingly composed, calmly asking for details. After my explanation, she assured me that no one was downstairs. Reluctantly, I followed her back into the basement as she flicked on the light and scanned the laundry room. I felt a sense of relief wash over me when she confirmed it was empty. Returning upstairs, I resumed my video game, trying to shake off the unease that lingered. As night fell, casting the basement into complete darkness apprehension grew. Despite my fear, hunger eventually drove me downstairs for a snack. My mom was already preparing dinner, but the darkness outside only intensified my dread of the basement. With its small windows offering no solace in the darkness, I ventured downstairs cautiously. Suddenly, the heater in the laundry room roared to life, its deafening noise startling me. Glancing back, I noticed the laundry room door swinging open. Heart pounding, I approached it slowly. The darkness within seeming to swallow me whole. Too scared to switch on the light, I mustered the courage to slam the door shut and sprint back to the safety of the couch. Despite the strangeness of the situation, the door inexplicably opened after my mom had closed it earlier. I didn't dwell on it. Fear had tethered me to the couch, where I clung desperately, trying to convince myself that I was safe. I stood frozen as I heard a man's voice behind me, his words echoing in the basement. At first, it felt surreal, like a nightmare encroaching on reality. Slowly turning, I beheld a sickly figure seated in the corner booth, his gaze fixed on me. His words pierced the silence, sending chills down my spine. My God, how you've grown, he muttered, his voice a sinister whisper. Unable to move or scream, I watched in horror as the man rose from his seat, his movements unnaturally slow and deliberate. His crooked posture seemed to inch closer, his words dripping with malice. Your mother won't let me see you guys, he hissed, each syllable heavy with menace. Finally, finding my voice, I screamed and raced for the safety of the stairs, the sound of my panicked cries filling the air. Bursting into the kitchen, I slammed the basement door shut and locked it pounding in my chest. Desperately, I relayed the terrifying encounter to my mom, her face draining of color as she realized the danger we were in. With trembling hands, she dialed 911, seeking refuge from the nightmare unfolding in our own home. In a blur of panic and fear, I barely recall the moments before the police arrived. Soon, a swarm of officers descended into the basement while my mom and I huddled in a safe room waiting for news. To our horror, the intruder they found lurking in the shadows was none other than my estranged uncle, a man tainted by unspeakable crimes, excommunicated from our family for his heinous acts. He had broken into our home hiding in the darkness of the basement, waiting to strike, haunted by the realization that this predator had been lurking beneath our own roof. I 
I shuddered at the thought of what could have happened. My uncle was swiftly apprehended and returned to prison, but the terror he inflicted lingered long after he was gone. As Halloween approached, the chill of fear hung heavy in the air, casting a shadow over what should have been a joyous time. Memories of that harrowing night served as a grim reminder of the evil that lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare the unsuspecting. I ventured further into the fashion room, my footsteps echoing in the silence. As I approached the mannequin, dread knotted in my stomach. The blanket that had concealed it was now gone, leaving the lifeless figure exposed in the dim light. A chill ran down my spine as I realized that someone, or something, had moved the blanket. My heart raised, and a sense of unease settled over me like a suffocating shroud. With trembling hands, I reached out to touch the mannequin, half expecting it to spring to life. But it remained still and silent. A silent sentinel in the eerie room, swallowing hard, hurriedly retrieved the blanket and draped it back over the mannequin, desperate to erase the unsettling sight from my mind. As I turned to leave, a flicker of movement caught my eye. At first, I dismissed it as a trick of the light, but then I saw it again. A subtle shift in the shadows, like someone lurking just out of sight. Panic seized me and I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest. Every instinct screamed at me to flee, to escape the suffocating grip of fear that threatened to consume me. With one last glance at the fashion room, I bolted from the basement. The image of the mannequin burned into my mind. As I emerged into the safety of the backyard, I tried to shake off the feeling of dread clung to me like a second skin, but deep down, I knew that something sinister lurked in the shadows of Aunt Melissa's fashion room, waiting to unleash its malevolent presence upon the unsuspecting. I approached cautiously, my heart pounding in my chest as I neared the figure covered by the blanket. As I got closer, realization sunk in that it wasn't just another mannequin. It was a person. The shock of the discovery was quickly overshadowed by the realization that the person underneath was not responding to my inquiries. A sense of unease gnawed at my stomach as I noticed the bare feet of a black person protruding from beneath the blanket. It was a stark contrast to the predominantly white attendees of the party. Without waiting for an answer, I turned and fled, urgency propelling me towards the safety of the outdoors. Call the police. There's someone in the basement, I shouted, panic rippling through the crowd as my words spread. My uncle sprang into action, rallying a few others to accompany him downstairs. I followed behind my heart hammering in my chest with each step. Upon reaching Aunt Melissa's fashion room, the blanket lay discarded on the floor. The mysterious figure vanished without a trace. Despite my insistence that someone had been there, the room now stood empty, its secrets concealed once more. Frantic searches ensued, every nook and cranny of the house meticulously examined but there was no sign of the intruder, leaving me feeling both vindicated and unsettled by the inexplicable events. As the police arrived and conducted their own investigation, the gravity of the situation sank in. The possibility of a stranger infiltrating our home, lurking in the shadows, sent shivers down my spine. In the aftermath of the incident, speculation ran rampant. Perhaps it was a homeless person seeking shelter, their presence explained by the lingering smell. 
Or maybe it was something more sinister. A malevolent force drawn to the darkness that lurked within Aunt Melissa's fashion room. Despite the lack of closure, the memory of that night lingered, casting a pall over future gatherings. The realization that evil could infiltrate even the most sacred of spaces haunted me, leaving me wary of the shadows that lurked just beyond the reach of the light. Watching over things, but I knew it couldn't be Grandpa either, because he had gone to bed early that night due to not feeling well. The figure outside the window remained motionless, its presence casting a shadow over our childish game. Despite Sam and Evan's dismissals, Kennedy and I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in the pit of our stomachs. The silhouette stood silent and unmoving, its intentions unknown. Reluctantly, we resumed our game. The thrill dampened by the lingering sense of apprehension as we crept through the darkness of the basement. Every creak and rustle seemed amplified, heightening our fear. Then, as if on cue, a loud thud echoed through the basement, causing us to jump in fright. Panic seized me as I realized it wasn't one of our cousins making noise. It was coming from outside the basement. Kennedy and I froze, exchanging worried glances as the realization sunk in that there was someone or something else in the house with us. The playful atmosphere of our game evaporated, replaced by a sense of impending danger. With trembling hands, I reached for Kennedy's arm, silently urging her to retreat. But before we could make our escape, a low, guttural growl echoed from the darkness, freezing us in our tracks. Sam and Evan emerged from their hiding spot, their faces pale with fear as they registered the terror in our eyes. Without a word, we hurriedly made our way back upstairs, the feeling of dread lingering long after we reached the safety of the main floor. As we huddled together, recounting our chilling encounter, a sense of foreboding settled over us, something sinister lurked in the shadows of my grandpa's house. Its presence, a silent menace that refused to be ignored, haunted by the memory of that night. I couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something far more sinister than a simple childhood game. And as the shadows lengthened and the night pressed in around us, couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lay hidden in the darkness. Back downstairs, feeling a wave of dread wash over us, the basement, once a place of childhood games and laughter, now felt like a trap, its shadows concealing an unknown threat. With trembling hands and pounding hearts, we gathered at the top of the stairs minds racing with fear and uncertainty. Sam and Evan's bravado had dissolved, replaced by a palpable sense of dread that hung heavy in the air. Whispers of panicked conversation filled the space between us as we debated our next course of action. Shooting the intruder was out of the question. We were just kids, ill-equipped to handle the gravity of the situation. But the thought of facing the adults with our fears was equally daunting. Would they believe us? Or would they dismiss our concerns as childish imagination? As we stood there, paralyzed by indecision, a sudden noise from the basement jolted us into action. It was a faint scraping sound, followed by the unmistakable sound of footsteps echoing through the darkness. Panic surged through me, adrenaline coursing through my veins as I realized the danger we were in. Without another word, we bolted for the safety of the living room, 
our fear driving us forward as we burst into the room, breathless and wide-eyed. The adults turn to us, concern etched on their faces. Before we could utter a word, my mom sensed the urgency in our expressions. What's wrong? she asked, her voice laced with concern. With quivering voices, we recounted the events of the evening, our words tumbling out in a rush as we struggled to convey the terror we had experienced. To my relief, my mom didn't dismiss our fears. Instead, she sprang into action, rallying the adults to investigate the basement while she called the police. Minutes stretched into agonizing eternity as we waited, fear gnawing at our insides. But finally, the sound of approaching sirens broke the silence, signaling the arrival of help. As the police swept through the house, searching for the intruder, a sense of relief washed over me, though the threat had not yet been neutralized. The presence of law enforcement offered a glimmer of hope in the darkness. Huddled together in the safety of the living room, our hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline, tears streamed down our faces as we tried to convey the horror of what we had witnessed. As we recounted the chilling encounter to our family, panic rippled through the room. My uncle, a seasoned cop, wasted no time grabbing one of my grandpa's guns and heading downstairs to confront the intruder. Minutes stretched into agonizing eternity as we waited for his return. Every passing second feeling like an eternity, with each creak of the floorboards and rustle of the wind outside, our fear intensified, a suffocating weight pressing down on us. Finally, my uncle emerged from the basement, his expression grave. There's no one down there, he said, his voice heavy with disbelief. But the terror in our eyes told a different story. We knew what we had seen, and it was real. Confusion and fear clouded our minds as we tried to make sense of the inexplicable events that had unfolded. How could the man have disappeared without a trace? And why had my uncle found no sign of him? As we struggled to find answers, a sense of unease settled over us like a shroud, casting a pall over the once familiar surroundings of my grandpa's house. The shadows seemed darker, the whispers of the wind more ominous, as if the darkness itself held secrets too terrible to comprehend. Haunted by the memory of that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something far more sinister than a mere intruder. And as the days turned into weeks and the memory faded, the fear remained etched in my mind. A constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the reach of the light. The events of that night cast a long shadow over my childhood, lingering in the recesses of my mind like a ghostly echo, despite the reassurances of the adults and the passage of time. The fear remained, a silent sentinel standing guard over the memories of that harrowing night. In the years that followed, I avoided basements whenever possible. The specter of that night haunting me at every turn, even as I grew older and the memory began to fade, the fear remained, a constant companion in the darkness. My grandfather's passing only served to deepen the sense of loss and longing that lingered within me. His absence left a void in my heart, a reminder of the fleeting nature of life and the fragility of our existence. Though time has softened the edges of that night, the scars it left behind still linger, a testament to the enduring power of fear and the resilience of the human spirit. 
and as I stand on the threshold of adulthood, I carry with me the lessons learned from that fateful night, a reminder to never underestimate the darkness that lurks within the shadows. As I reflect on the journey that brought me to this moment, I find solace in the knowledge that I am not alone Though the specter of fear may still haunt me, I am surrounded by love and support, a beacon of light in the darkness. And so, as I bid farewell to the past and embrace the uncertain future that lies ahead, I carry with me the memories of that night, a reminder of the strength that lies within us all waiting to be unleashed in the face of adversity. Despite my efforts to move on, the trauma of that night continued to shadow my every step. The fear of basements remained deeply ingrained in my psyche, a constant reminder of the vulnerability I had felt that night. As I grew older, I found myself avoiding situations that might trigger those memories opting instead for well-lit spaces and crowded environments where the darkness couldn't swallow me whole. But try as I might to outrun the ghosts of that night. They continued to haunt me, lurking in the shadows of my subconscious, waiting to pounce at the slightest provocation. It wasn't until years later as I embarked on a journey of self-discovery and healing, that I finally found the courage to confront my fears head on. Through therapy and introspection, I began to unravel the tangled web of emotions that had kept me bound in fear for so long. Slowly but surely, I started to reclaim control over my life, refusing to let the specter of that night define me with each step forward, I felt the weight of that fear begin to lift, replaced by a newfound sense of empowerment and resilience. Today, as I stand on the threshold of a new chapter in my life, I carry with me the lessons learned from that dark and terrifying night. I know now that fear is not something to be conquered but rather something to be embraced and understood. For it is in confronting our deepest fears that we discover the strength and courage that lies within us all. And though the shadows may still linger, casting their long reach over our lives, I face the future with renewed hope and determination knowing that I am stronger than the darkness that once threatened to consume me. In the end, the darkness that once held me captive has become a beacon of light, guiding me towards a future filled with possibility and hope. Though the scars of that night may never fully fade, they serve as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit power of love to overcome even the deepest fears. As I bid farewell to the shadows of the past, I embrace the journey that lies ahead with open arms, knowing that with each step forward, I am moving closer to a life untethered by fear and uncertainty. So here's to new beginnings, to facing our fears head on finding the courage to embrace the light that shines within us all. May we never forget that even in our darkest moments, there is always a glimmer of hope waiting to lead us home. And so, with gratitude in my heart and determination in my soul, I step boldly into the future, ready to embrace whatever challenges may come my way, knowing that I am stronger than the darkness that once threatened to consume me. The end 
is not the end, but rather the beginning of a new chapter in the story of my life. A story filled with courage, resilience, and the unwavering belief that no matter how dark the night may seem, the dawn will always break, casting its warm glow upon the world once more. So let us face the future together, hand in hand, with hearts full of hope and minds open to possibility. For in the end, it is not the darkness that defines us, but the light that we carry within us, shining bright, even in the darkest of nights. And with that, I bid farewell to the shadows of the past and welcome the dawn of a new day, a day filled with promise, adventure, and the endless possibility of tomorrow.